time to wake up. This is what you need. Entertaining and educating. It's Kenny Klein TV. Tune in, please don't delay. Entertaining what we educate. This is what you need. Hey, Kenny Klein TV. Let's go. What is going on, guys? I hope everyone is having a great day. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you're coming back, welcome back. Today, we are taking a look at Tyrant Terminator audits. Now, the last time we checked this guy out, he was complaining to IA and saying how he was very, very disappointed that in his mind, they were covering up and trying to lessen charges given to an individual that he feels battered him. Well, apparently he is not done with that. Apparently there was a follow-up. I don't want to give away too much right here, right now, but we're going to get right into this and find out if he gets what he wants. Is justice going to be served? Let's get right into it. What's the final one? Not oh, the same Yes. So unfounded. Not negative. Well, yes, technically it's similar. Yes. Okay. So, because um, my my whole complaint was that the detective that was on the case uh, charged the, the the man with a lesser charge. I mean, that's true. She did. I wouldn't. It's it's a local charge. Is can you go to jail for that? No. Of course not. No, because it's a local charge. Right. And I mean, that's what my complaint was surrounding. So surround. So that's. I mean, that's true. So that. So like, is the what I'm but saying is there less. Is, officers have discretion into how they want to charge certain things. Uh, local battery with no injuries. Typically, I'm not saying in all cases. Mm -hmm. Lesser batteries like that. Typically, we assign to branch court. Mm, okay. So, because it, it, it'll be totally different. Like I was trying to tell you guys, it'll be totally different for a citizen doing it to a state worker. Boy, he really just has this distrust going on here. I mean, no, he, he, he just told you. Usually if there is, you know, no injury, they're, they're going to do the lesser charge as to you know, not clog up the court system and things like this. I mean, you the, you got to understand that, you know, even if they were to give it a charge of felony, it doesn't necessarily mean that the prosecutors are going to pursue that. They might not think that they have enough or, I mean, there are a lot of circum circumstances that, you know, um, go into this sort of thing, but you know, no, it's just corruption to him. Not necessarily. It all depends. A lot of it has to do with injuries. If you would have left maybe an injury, or I'm sorry, if he would have left an injury on you, mm -hmm. or say he punched you in the face, something more drastic like that, other than grabbing your hand and pushing it down. Right. It is a battery, but it's not as severe as someone leaving injuries on you. Right. You I'm, uh, yeah, I can. Oh, yeah, 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 that's okay. Yeah, I can understand that. But my, my whole thing, uh, Commander Bradfield, when, like, even when the sergeant was out there that day, we were standing on the sidewalk, uh, he made a good point in terms of, like, how do you guys, when you guys conduct these investigations? And he said, typically, you guys like to work with the victim. So I'm, I'm, well, I wasn't even worked with. I wasn't right. even given an option to say, yeah, charge the guy with the. My understanding is that Detective D. Virgilio, um, spoke to you and said she was issuing a uh, local ordinance citation. Absolutely not. Because think about it. She told me she told me verbatim out of her own mouth that if the state's attorneys contact me, then that means that guy was going to fight it. But if they didn't, then that means he pled guilty. So it, it has nothing to do with you know, that doesn't coincide with a, a city violation. Um, so our... The state's attorneys only deal with state offenses. Exactly. The local ordinances are done by a law firm that the city hires. Okay. My understanding is talking to him is that there was a court date and you did not appear for that. That was because I wasn't required to. True. You're, you're, you're never required to show up to court unless you have a subpoena. Um, but... I don't know what happened in that. My understanding is that there was a court date and you weren't there for court. 
So they try to say the re. So the judge threw it out. They they nollied it. Ha <laughs> ha. Because I wasn't there. Because you you would have to been a witness and testified to what happened. So and this still would have been just a city ordinance violation. Correct. It wouldn't. Correct. It was. It was never. He was never charged with the state charge at Correct. all. So, so see, that's what I'm saying. I was. I, I, like I said, they was. I was told that basically my uh, peers was not needed when it's a city violation. It's, it's like a ticket. But <laughs> you know what but I mean. Even in a ticket, say for example, I get stopped for speeding, right? Right. And. The police officer doesn't show up to court. Okay. They're the witness for the speeding. If the police officer doesn't show up, the judge will throw out the case. So, correct! Is a very, very solid point that I don't believe can be argued. I mean, that just, that is just the case. If the witness to the crime doesn't show up and let the judge know, hey, yeah, this is what happened, they have no choice but to throw it out. I mean, didn't that happen with Josh and hot tow truck girl? Kind of the same thing. She didn't show or she didn't show up and then it got tossed and he went and said, oh, I won and blah, blah, blah. So who, who, who was it on to contact me to, t to for me to be at court? Like, was it somebody supposed to be some type of correspondence into the mail or? Um been a long time since I've been in branch court, but usually I don't know if they send out letters saying that a court date is up and you're needed for appearance, mm -hmm. but according to the reports that I read, you were spoken to over the phone. That's right. And advised of a court date. Now, now I'm just, right, by the detective. So, so okay, so I'm glad, okay, so let me put this together. I, I, was, I was spoken to the detective over the phone. She did tell me a, about a court date. Mm -hmm. But she also said, but if the state's attorneys don't contact you for this case, then that means he pled guilty. If he, if the state's attorneys do contact you, then that means he's going to fight it. So that means, and like you said, the only time the state get involved is when it's a state charge. Right. So I was under the assumptions that, you that he, subpoena? no, that he was going to be charged with a state charge from the beginning. Oh, so there was some miscommunication from the detective. Okay. So my thing is moving forward, uh, Bradfield. Um, since I mean, obviously the complaint has been unfounded, like you said. Uh, what what can I do in terms of recourse moving forward? Because I'm, I'm what not do you mean? like as, as how like some type of relief because we can't just obviously it, the, the the detective did something um, with ill intent. Well, it, 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 I believe that's the miscommunication came subsequent. So I, I believe in the beginning, though, her whole intentions was to make sure he get a lesser charge. I mean, that's that's obvious. I don't know. It doesn't sound very obvious to me that there was ill intent at all. I think, like he said, there definitely was some miscommunication, which, you know, it, it, it happens. You know, and it, it is very annoying when there's miscommunication and things like that. But, um, yeah, bro, I, I think you're going to have a hard time proving that there is ill intent here. What do you guys think? Do you think that this is going to go somewhere or do you think it's probably going to get dismissed, maybe ignored, something like that? I, I'm thinking that's what's going to happen here. At this point, the miscommunication came afterwards. That's that would have to be if the state's attorney would char decide to charge it. Right, but it have to be presented first. Because I've I've been over to the state, the state's attorney's office as well. And they they, they had no record. Have seen it because it went to the local charge. Okay. Um, I mean, what what else I'm saying? Moving forward, then what can I mean? Is there a way I can follow up? Or I mean, I know you're an IA, and and I'm really supposed to stop there, but I mean. The, you can talk to one of the investigatives sergeants and see if they can talk to the detectives about presenting it in uh, state. State. Okay. Are the, he or she here? Any one of them available right now? Or uh, mm -hmm. the 
the detectives are tied up right now. Okay. I'll pass their information along. Um, another avenue you can pursue if you want to is talk to an attorney. Okay. And um, pursue a civil suit. Well, guys, it appears that this is not over. This will not be the last of this situation we are going to hear about because he is convinced that there was conspiracy to not charge this guy with a felony and it was done with ill intent and if it were the shoe were on the other foot that there would be a different outcome which honestly i i highly highly doubt that but I mean, with, with auditors and cop watchers, usually when they get into this, they already have a beef with uh, the government in general. So they, they already come in with this <sighs> dislike, distrust, things like that. What do you guys think? I thought the officer handled the situation very professionally. He gave him different avenues he could pursue. I don't know if he's going to try civil litigation, if he's going to follow up. Well, I will keep you informed. All right, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will see you again in another video. Peace. We've only just been.